from it, but Second Peter chapter two, verse one says, "But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not." And their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. What I want to talk about tonight is about not being someone's merchandise. You see in verse 3, it says, Through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Okay, And this is talking about false prophets here. There's going to be false prophets that are going to come in and they're going to bring in damnable heresies. And it, in this passage, we see how they do it. Okay. There's, you know, it shouldn't be easy to bring in damnable heresies. It should be a difficult thing, but you know, it, it can happen. It's something that if we don't watch out for it, it can happen to us. And there's methods that people use because that, that, that just work because of the fact that we are sinful people. We have sinful flesh and there are certain things that we're just kind of naturally drawn to as sinners. And there are people out there, there are preachers, people who call themselves preachers, that know how to use these things to get you to listen and they get you to pay attention and they can draw people away. And when you think about the fact that when it comes to false doctrine, that even you know the best of us, if we're not careful, we are prone to falling for it. You know, it, that's the case when we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, when we have a perfect Bible. If we are still prone to being deceived by false prophets through these methods that they use, I don't think it's a stretch to say that if people use these same methods in other areas, let's say through advertisement or something, that they couldn't win us over and they we could not be duped. And I'm afraid there are some things that many Christians, we have just been duped in, that we have been made merchandise of. And so this passage here, it's specifically talking about just false doctrine that's being brought in. People who bring in false doctrine, it's talking about, uh, we're going to see in this passage, the ways they bring in this false de doctrine, how it, how it is that they are able to draw us away, and they do it by using our sinful nature against us. And they use our sinful nature for their benefit. And so we're not talking so much about false doctrine tonight, but I want to show that these same things that people use to bring in false doctrine and make merchandise out of God's people, they're being used in more than just churches today. And many people, including Christians, we are being made merchandise out of by things like the advertising companies or just our messed up culture in general. There are things that I'm afraid are rubbing off on us. Things that we, without even realizing it, you know, we are way too much like our culture. You know, God has called us to be separate. Okay, He has saved us. He's given us His Holy Spirit. Yet, are not Christians often a lot like the world? And do we not often have many of the same problems that the world does? Now, why is that? Don't we know better? Don't we know what the truth is of the Word of God? We know what the Scriptures say. We understand that certain things are sins, that they have no place with God's people. We see in the Bible how we're warned over and over again that there is judgment for these things, that there is chastening from the Lord if we do these things. And if we know all these things, then why do we do them? You know, Why do we ever sin when we know the truth about sin? Okay, We all know what Jesus had to do on the cross because of our sin, don't we? We all know that God is displeased with sin. Do any of us in here want to displease God? Well, no. But do we? Yeah. Why is that? And it's because of our flesh. And we are prone to certain things. 
And I'm afraid that we need to realize, just like there are people, there are bad guys out there that will come into the church and will use these things against us to draw us away into false doctrine. If, I mean, if we believe that, why wouldn't we believe that all over, out in the world, through advertising, things like that, some of those same people wouldn't use those things to appeal to our flesh and to get our money? And not just to get our money, but all, and it's ultimately about getting our money in the advertising world. It's all, that's ultimately what it's about. But at the, at the same time, we are, we're, letting these, we're letting way too much stuff control us. Things that we should be above, we're falling for them all the time. we got to think about these things. And to many people, this time of year we're going into, going into the holiday season right now, it is the most miserable time of the year. People, they are, they're more stressed out. They end up getting themselves in big financial trouble trying to do all the things that we're supposed to do for the holidays. They get caught up in these things. And people, we ought to be able to enjoy the holidays. You ought to be able to get together with family and you know take days off and enjoy these things. But many don't because they get too caught up in the rat race that the holidays bring. And we and let's let's you know lose the halos tonight. You know that that's you sometimes too. We get caught up in some of these things. And, and I understand the world get manipulated the way they do. Okay, our world's really dumb. But unfortunately, we are, we're pretty dumb sometimes ourselves too. And we've got to watch out for this stuff. I understand the world doing it, but Christians, we can't keep falling for these things. And you know, the key to getting victory and actually enjoying the holidays is to make sure you know yourself as well as the advertisers know you. And you know, people love to accuse us of being conspiracy theorists and stuff, but this stuff is not conspiracy. Okay, There is a reason that people pay millions of dollars for commercials. And it's because it works. For some reason, it works. People are more likely to drink a certain beer just because they have you know, beautiful women on the commercial. Apparently, that, that works. Even though we know that that's not what these people look like to drink that stuff all the time. Even though any dietician will tell you that beer is not going to help your figure, yet they'll have them drink, you know, these you know, great looking people drinking it and, and they'll pay millions of dollars to show you that during a Super Bowl or something like that. Why do they do that? Because it works. These things, people fall for it. And so this isn't a conspiracy. This is just a fact. People, they know how to appeal to your flesh. They do studies on these things. They pay a lot of money to do these studies because they want your money and they want to know how to get it from you. And they know the best ways and they use all these little things. I mean, you think about just in the, in, in, with Disney, for example. I mean, the Disney, they are the masters at the advertising. I mean, they know how to get the attention of the little kids. And it's amazing, you know, even my own kids, Growing up, how interested they would get in characters that they never even seen the movie. I remember Tommy when the first Spider Man came out. Man, he just was nuts over anything Spider Man. He got excited about anything Spider Man. He'd never seen the movie. The movie hadn't even come out yet. But I'm telling you, I remember as I remember as a parent seeing that. I'm like, why is he so obsessed with Spider Man? And you know, and then I'm looking around the store. There's just Spider Man stuff everywhere, and I don't understand it. Okay, but somehow advertisers just figured out how to stick it into the mind of that little kid. You know, you want Spider-Man this, Spider-Man that. And, you know, and it's like a lot of these products too, you know, I mean a Band-Aid, okay? Band-Aids are Band-Aids, aren't they? But you know what? People will pay more money if it has Spider-Man on it. Why is that? Well, because kids want it, you know? And it's like, you know, you buy Spider-Man Band-Aids for your little boy too. It's funny how they keep getting hurt too. And it's like they want to keep using Band-Aids. And the Band-Aid companies, they know that. And they already have to pay royalties to the Spider-Man company uh, you know, that, uh, that owns the trademark and everything on that. But they're willing to do it because they know if we put Spider-Man on it, you know, little boys are going to be more likely to get hurt and they're going to use more Band-Aids, which means the parents are going to have to buy more. You know, they get their money back. I, I don't know how it works. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how you know, little girls... okay. With the stupid Frozen movie, that stupid Let It Go song that just, I mean, yeah, drove me nuts. They were, they, at where I worked, they played that every day for the longest time. And I, I hadn't even seen the movie or anything. 
And I, I was hearing that song, and I remember one day that was playing, all of a sudden I heard that song, and I'm just like, what in the world? And I went, it was from a Disney cartoon. I was like, that where that stupid song's from? And I remember we'd be in Walmart in the store, and they would start playing that song. And any little girl you saw in the store was like singing along. That song hypnotized an entire, you know, the, all the little girls in the world. How did they do that? I have no idea how that worked. But it worked. They did it. And, I, and, you know, and kids, too, they see these things and, you know, oh, mom, we got to get that yogurt. It's got, you know, Olaf on it. You know, it's got these frozen. And they, they, they go nuts over that stuff. And it, and it works. And so while I don't understand that stuff, if I, I could probably read some books and, you know, do some, some studies and figure out how they do that stuff. I know there's a, there's a method to the madness there. And it works. But under, I'm, I'm saying all this to say that there are people out there that that's their job, knowing how to advertise, knowing how to get your money from you, know how to get you doing the things that they want you to do. And they know you better than you know yourself. And they will use everything they can, every tool they can to get you doing what they want to do. And we've got to understand as Christians that we have the Holy Spirit inside us. We don't have to always give in to our sin nature. And we especially don't need to give into the things. There are some things we can give into that's not necessarily bad. All right. If you see a nice juicy T-bone steak and you want to give in to the desire and go for it, I don't think you're sinning by doing that. But, you know, there's a lot of things that we give into that just make us miserable, that bring regrets, that bring some serious consequences. And we shouldn't fall for that stuff. We need to learn how to get past that. We need to learn how to say no to our flesh. And we, this time of year is when people, I mean, advertisers go crazy. This is the big time of year for all these companies. This is when they spend the big bucks on the advertising and on the commercials. And you're going to get hammered with this stuff. And if you're not careful, a lot of you are going to fall for it. And you're going to get yourself in financial trouble in the next month that you're going to have to deal with for several months after that. Maybe until the next year. And then you're just going to get yourself in that same trouble again. And we've got to watch out for this stuff. So what is it that people use to make merchandise of, of us? Well, the first thing we see here in Second uh, Peter chapter 2, verse 3, we see covetousness. It says, and through covetousness, through covetousness, shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. And none of us in here would like to think of ourselves as being greedy. But we need to understand that we have a natural tendency to be greedy. You know, and greed and covetousness, they ultimately cause envy. Look at what Job chapter 5 and verse 2 says. I'm going to be jumping around to different scriptures, but uh, Job chapter 5 verse 2. And, 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 it'll say, and greed is, greed is contagious, okay? I mean, have you, we've all been there before. You know, you go to Walmart on Black Friday or something. And have you ever seen the way these people get around DVDs? I mean... Look, you can go to Walmart tonight and go look at the DVDs and nobody's going to be fighting over them. It's no, there's nobody's going to be standing in line for them. And when you stop and think about it, I mean, there's some pretty cheap DVDs right there. You know, they've got a $5 section of DVDs. It's like, they're like all five bucks. But on Black Friday, they're going to have a $5 section of DVDs and people are going to be fighting over them. Why is that? Why is nobody fighting over them right now? Well, because nobody told them they were supposed to. You know, and there's just something about when you see people hovering around something and wanting it really bad, don't you want it too? I, it, it, it's just, it's just how it is. Your kids are the same way. There's that toy in the house that nobody's played with for weeks, but they see one of their siblings playing with it. Now they all want to play with it. Now they're all fighting over it. Why is that? We have a natural tendency to be greedy and, and to want things in Ephesians chapter five or not Ephesians, Job chapter five, verse two says for wrath killeth the foolish man and envy slayeth the silly one. OK, envy, it, it gets us in trouble. Envy, it, you know, longing for something that somebody else has, you know, that greed, that covetous envy, whatever you want to call it. You know, and they all have their own definition of those things, but they all are kind of in the same family of sins. They get us in trouble. They cause us to do things that we wouldn't normally do. They cause us to do things that we don't want to do. And uh, turn, Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 17. I want to read a verse over here. Proverbs 23 verse 17. It says, 
Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. Okay, don't let your heart envy sinners. Why would we envy sinners? Well, because a lot of times we spend too much time looking at what they do. You know, and it's, it's something about when you are watching other people all the time, seeing what other people do, you want to do what they're doing. It's just, it's just part of our nature. We're copycats. So and these, these DVDs that people are fighting over, okay, th- that's where it gets ugly. So when I go Black Friday shopping, I always go watch the DVD section because I've learned from experience that's where the best fights happen. Why is that? I, I probably shouldn't tell you why. It's kind of, it, it might sound a little degrading, but um, there's a reason for that. I'll tell you after church if you're really interested. <laughs> But there is a reason people fight over the cheap stuff versus some of the bigger items. You would think they'd want to fight over the bigger items or maybe they're saving one or $200. But no, they fight over the things that are going to save like two bucks. And yeah, there, there's a reason for that. But that's another subject for another day. I'll, I'll just let you all think about that. <laughs> think about that. I know that's kind of cruel, but it doesn't really have anything to do with this message. So I don't want to go there. But uh, but we do, we, we see other people wanting this stuff and it just, it makes us want it too. And I've been there before. I've been, I've been, you know, walk through the store on Black Friday, just hoping to video a fight or something like that. I've never been able to succeed in doing that, but I will, I go to where, you know, pe- things look the most intense and it, it is, it's usually the DVD section. And, and when I'm there and I see how bad these people want things, sometimes like, you know, why aren't I in line for that? You know, maybe, and I start wanting it too. Maybe I need to get one of those TVs, you know, or maybe I need to get, maybe I need to get in on, on some of this stuff. I don't, I start wanting to do it too. I don't, it's just, it's just part of nature. But when we do, if we're always watching the sinners, if we're always watching the wicked, if we're always paying attention to what everybody else is doing, we're going to start wanting to do those things too. And you know what? One of the things that is causing Americans to have all the same problems is and do all the same things is because we're watching all the same junk. We're watching all the same commercials, watching all the same TV shows, looking at all the same advertisements on the internet, watching, you know, seeing all the same things on social media, watching all the viral videos on YouTube. We're seeing all the same things all the time, and it's causing us to want to do those things too. And we like to think those things don't rub off on us, but if you watch enough of that stuff, you're going to want to do those things. If your girls are watching, you know, these other girls on TV enough, they're going to want to dress like them. They're going to want to do their hair like them. They're going to want to talk like them. These things rub off on us. And the Bible tells us not to let our hearts envy sinners. But if we're looking at them all the time, if we're watching them all the time, we're going to want to do those things. It's going to rub off on us. And we got, we got to be careful. And our world is greedy. Our world is selfish. Our world is covetous. And they do, it's like, you know, kids today too. It's like, if they don't have a cell phone, I mean, they just think they're the most deprived kid in the world. Well, I've seen some of these kids shows that they watch all the time. They have these little kids on there. They're always like on iPhones and things. Why do they do that? Because Apple pays a bunch of money to get them to have a kid use an iPhone on there because they know millions of kids are going to see that and then they're going to want one too. And then you got these parents they have no clue how to parent kids. They have no clue how to raise kids. And it's like, uh, what, are, what are we supposed to do? Well, they do what they see doing on TV. And on TV, they're buying the kids all the junk they want and giving them every little thing they want. And there's and, and when you see these things, we, we cannot let our hearts envy sinners, but that's all we watch. And how are we supposed to do that? How are we supposed to follow that command when we're watching TV 24-7? And not even 24-7, two or three hours a day. If you're on social media all the time, seeing what everybody's doing, what everybody's hashtagging or whatever, you're going to want to do it too. And there's a reason, you know, you think about, you know, our country is always talking about diversity. They talk about diversity all the time. Our country is great because of its diversity. But when you stop to think about it, we're not a whole lot different. Why is that? Why is it that we have a country that's got people of all different colors and origins from all over the world, but we all come together and every day after thanks or every Thanksgiving, we turn into just greedy animals when it comes to just lame products. You know why? It's because we're all watching the same things all the time. We're all seeing the same things, hearing the same things. And it is, there used to be differences. There used to be diversity in our culture, but there's not anymore. 
We're, we're all pretty much the same. And a lot of people would say, well, that's wonderful. No, because the same that we're turning into is not too pretty. It's pretty, it's pretty ugly. And I wish we did have some diversity in this country, but we don't. We're all just alike, all the same problems, all the same issues. And envy, you know, it causes us to want to compete with people we can't beat. Okay? There's always going to be somebody with more money than you. We can't compete with everybody. So, you know, and it's amazing how people think, I've got to have this type of car, this type of clothing. Why? I say it all the time. Why do you care so much about the car you drive and what it looks like? You're on the inside of the car, not the outside of the car. You know, the clothes that you wear. You're not the one looking at those clothes. It's somebody else looking at those clothes. You know, why do we care so much about what people think? Why do you care so much about what's on the tag inside your clothes that nobody can see? I don't even know what kind of suit this is. Towncraft, all right? I've actually had, I think I got this suit when I was 18 years old. So I guess Towncraft must be pretty good. I don't know. It's, it's kind of in bad shape, but still, you know, still wearing it. And, you know, why, why do we care about that? But, you know, none of you needed to know that. You know, maybe some of you all care about that kind of stuff. But people will. They'll pay more to have a certain brand, and nobody can even see that it's that brand. You know, and, and some people pay more, and you can see, you know, the Under Armour logos and all that. And it's like you paid more so you can be a walking billboard for another company. Why did you do that? Why did you think you needed to spend so much more to buy that Under Armour shirt? Well, because that's what all the Duck Dynasty guys wear all the time, you know? And, and they do. Why? But you know why those guys wear it all the time? One, because they're loaded. But not just because they're loaded. Because Under Armour's paying those guys to wear those things. So brainless people like you will pay extra money to get those things just because those guys wore it. It works. And we do. And so we, you know, and just some of the, Gay things the guys are wearing. Why would you do that? Well, you know, they wore it on High School Musical or whatever teenagers are watching. I think that's kind of old. You know, what, what I don't know. Whatever people are watching, Glee. I, I don't know. And and you see those things, and so you do, you fall for that, and and they they use that envy. You know, the guy that you know looks like a weirdo. You know, all the girls are complimenting his outfit on the TV show or on the TV, on the commercial, and so the guy thinks, I got to dress that way too, and the girls will pay attention to me. Those girls got paid to compliment that guy. It was a commercial. It was called acting, okay? You're still going to be ugly in it. You know, it's just, just don't fall for it. But and it causes people to, it causes us to follow people that we shouldn't follow. Um, Proverbs 20, or um, we looked at Proverbs 23, 17. You know, let, you know it, it's usually the people that they're using in these advertisements are wicked people, aren't they? It's usually wicked people. You go walk through Sears or uh, Bergner's and you look at the perfume section, it's usually some of the most wicked, vile women that's advertising perfume. Why do they, why do they use those people? They don't use godly people for stuff like that. They use the most wicked people for stuff like that. And they, they use that, they use those people simply because of the fact that it will help them sell things. We looked it up the other day. We were wondering like who had the most Twitter followers. We were looking at the top 10 Twitter people and it was the most wicked, some of the most wicked people in this country. It was mostly singers and it was like, was it, was Katy Perry on top or yeah, I think it was like Katy Perry and she, she's just weird. And then, you know, Ellen DeGeneres was one of the top ones on there. And I, I can't remember it was, it was mostly women and it was mostly some of the most wicked women in this country. That's who people are following and patterning themselves after. And we're not supposed to let our hearts envy sinners, but obviously most of our country is looking at those people. That is who most of our country is looking at people like that. And they are the ones setting the fashions. They are the ones setting the trends. And maybe we're not necessarily looking at them, but we're looking at other people who are following those people. You know, your daughter that's in school, she might not be following Katy Perry on Twitter, but she's following after all her friends who are following after Katy Perry or whoever. And so those things, they're rubbing off on us. They're becoming a part of who we are. And I, you know, I'll never understand why Christians are so desperate to look and act like the world. James 4.4, 4, 
It says, Ye adulterers and adulteress, know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Okay, and it is so. I guess you know there is as a. I do understand the fact that we have the flesh, so it's going to cause us to love the things the world does, and it's going to cause us to want what they want. But shouldn't that spirit of God that's in us every once in a while cause us to say, you know, I don't want to have anything to do with that. I don't want to look like those people. I don't want to talk like those people. I don't want to act like those people. They are the enemies of God. And if you live back, you know, if you live back in the Civil War days and you were on the side of the North, you're not going to go around wearing a Johnny Red cap. You're not going to do that. You're not going to associate yourself in any way, you know, with the South. They are the enemies. We're, you know, we're against them. And understand that while we are enemies with the world, not in the sense that we're wanting to fight and wanting to kill them, but we are different. We are at enmity. There is differences. And we're trying to win them over to our side. And we're not going to do that by being them and becoming them. And we, and we, are, we are different. And the Bible there, and James, he calls me adulterers and adulteresses. That's what, that's what you are spiritually when you're trying to be like the world. And we do, you know, parents, they wonder why their kids are struggling with worldliness and, you know, wanting to wear all these wrong things. Well, if your kids are watching wicked people all the time, if they're watching all the television and entertainment that everybody else is watching, they're going to want to do what everybody else is doing. And there are just some things that you should just never even have to fight about. You know, I, I, I should never have to fight with my boys about whether or not they get an earring or not. That, that. I hope that will never even become a discussion in our house. But you know what? If they're sitting around and, you know, I don't know who the people are they even watch anymore. I'm sure, I'm sure there's some famous boys out, boy bands and things like that. out there. Those, those guys are always so girly and so disgusting. But you know what? If my boys started watching that stuff, they start listening to Justin Bieber and people like that all the time, you know, they're probably going to want to do some of that stuff. And so, you know what? They don't watch it. I'm not going to let them watch this stuff. I don't want it rubbing off on them. I don't want my girls being the type of women, you know, like, you know, Katy Perry and those people. So I'm not going to let them get their albums. I'm not going to let them watch, you know, her videos. And I'm not going to let them follow her on Twitter. Because the last thing I want is that rubbing off. I saw one video with her one time that just freaked me out. It was so weird. And I was like, that woman is weird. And that's pretty much all I know about her. And, when, and I, it blows my mind that she's like got more Twitter followers than anybody in the world. It's just, it's, it's crazy. But, but then all of a sudden, when you realize that that's who most of the people in the world are following, you start to understand why we see some of the weird things that we see and why we see some of the weird outfits that we see. See, I don't watch the stuff on television, but I'll do, you know, I, I'm usually way behind on that stuff, but I will, I'll start noticing trends amongst our community just weird things that guys or girls are doing. And then, you know, months later I'll come across and I'll see somebody on television that's doing that. It's like, that's where it came from. You know, they, they saw some reprobate from Hollywood doing it and they, they, they all pick up on it. And so, you know, envy covetousness, it makes it easy for us to be enticed. Um, well, I, I need to move on. I need to move on from this. I've spent a long time in this stuff, but uh, Proverbs 1, 10 through 19. That's a good passage to read. I'm going to, I'm going to skip it. Well, let's go ahead and read it. I don't want to skip it. This is good. It says, He that winketh with an eye and causeth sorrow. Uh, or that's, I'm, I'm in chapter 10. Ch- uh, chapter 1, verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come, lurk, uh, come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause, let us swallow them up alive as the grave and as whole as those that go down to the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Notice he's like, no, don't be enticed by this. Don't consent to them. And listen to how they're tempting them with all these things that anybody would want. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the sinners, of the owners thereof. So we see that the way these sinners, they're going to entice you. The way you get tricked is they're going to throw the things of the flesh at you. 
Things that all of us, our flesh would desire. And if you're not careful, you're going to be enticed by these things. And that's what happens when you are greedy of gain. And so we've got to watch out who we're following, who we're listening to, who we're paying attention to. These people, they know how to use the things of the flesh to draw us after them and to get us into trouble. And so, uh, you know, watch, watch out for those things. But people are at this time of year, you know, they've got that envy. You know, they use, uh, you know, the envy, the covetousness, all those things. And then, you know, emptiness. Okay. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 31 and 32, we see that story. We're not going to read it where Saul and his, Saul had proclaimed that fast, which was kind of foolish to do during a battle. And then those guys finally came time to eat and they went and they like killed an animal and they ate it with the blood. Like a bunch of animals, they went and they're just eating raw meat. Why would you do something like that? Well, they were really, really hungry. It was called empty bellies. Do we not all do things we wouldn't normally do when we have empty bellies? When we're hungry? Our desire, we just want to do whatever we can to fill them. And we just have, I've, I've talked about this before though, we have a natural desire to want to fill that which is empty. Our stomach, for example, you know, that it affects our behavior when our stomach's empty. We want to fill empty spaces, okay? You know, have your husbands, have your wife ever come, you know, we got this empty space in our house. You know, we need to fill it with something, with furniture. I got an empty space in the wall. You know, we want to put a picture or some kind of decoration on it. We got to fill these empty spacements, okay? Empty spaces affect your contentment. But then what happens after that? You know, you fill those spaces. Well, now we need a bigger house. For, you know, to store all our stuff. And then you get a bigger house and now you got more empty spaces. And, you know, it, it's just a never-ending cycle. You know, empty pews will affect the preaching sometimes. You know, I can't get past these empty pews. You know, I got, then I'm preaching to people who aren't here instead of preaching to the people who are here. You know, they, I mean, just empty stuff. We hate it. Empty wallets. That'll affect your marriage, won't it? You know? <laughs> just a, an empty, empty house can affect the happiness. You know, empty hearts affect everything. And what is it that advertisement does too? Look at all these things you don't have. And we, oh man, you know, I, I do need that 72 inch TV. I've only got a 63 inch TV or whatever, you know, and we, uh, I, I, I got to have that. And you, you think about it, all those people that were fighting over TVs last year on Black Friday, they're going to be doing it again this year. How many TVs can you watch at one time? It's like they got to have a TV in every room in their house, it's just, it's the most ridiculous thing in the world. But, you know, what's amazing about the Christmas season is how it's the most stressful and ungrateful time of the year. And it's kicked off with Thanksgiving. That's when people are the most ungrateful, the most unthankful, and it all starts on Thanksgiving now. It used to start after Thanksgiving. Now the most ungrateful time of the year is kicked off every Thanksgiving. We go now and we do our little Thanksgiving tradition where we act like we're thankful for stuff. And then we immediately stuff our faces and run to the stores and act like greedy animals. I mean, is it not the biggest joke that you've ever seen? And in Romans chapter 1 and verse 21, when it's talking about, uh, you know, all these, you know, the wickedness that people do, one of the things that got them to that point uh, I'm not going to quote it right. Let me read it. It says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but become vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. When you're not, th- when, when pe- people who are not thankful are people who are not satisfied with what God has done for them. They do not like God's plan for them. And what happens? They become unthankful and they become darkened. The Bible says their foolish heart was darkened. And if we would actually learn to be thankful, we wouldn't fall for a lot of this stuff. Because you know, we would we would be in light, we would have light, we would be lightened, but people's hearts, they've been darkened by the lack of thankfulness. And it's just sad because the one time of year that we had to celebrate thankfulness and where people used to actually talk about what they were thankful for and actually sit around and enjoy a day at home being thankful for what they have, it is turned into a day of just pure greed and just running around, just trying to consume everything upon their own lust. And even Christian people, we fall for it just as bad as everybody else. And, I, and I, I'm not against all Black Friday shopping. Some people genuinely have the time of their life out shopping all night. Some women, they do. I mean, they literally 
will shop all night long and they enjoy every minute of it. And listen, if you saved up your money this year, as long as you're not like running up credit cards and getting yourself in trouble, if you want to go out this Friday and just have a time shopping all day long, if that's what is fun for you, go for it. But if you're just doing it and you're running up your credit card thing, this is what I'm supposed to do. It's Black Friday. You're, I'm supposed to be shopping. You know, don't, don't do that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do what everybody's doing. But unfortunately, a lot of people are going to because we're coveting after things right now. We're envying people for things because we've fallen for all the advertisements. We'll feel like a bump on a log. We'll feel like a loser if we're not doing what everybody else is doing on the holidays. You know what I'm going to be doing on Black Friday in the evening when everybody's out shopping? I'm going to be in bed sleeping because i got to get up early and work the next morning. And so I, that's not what I want to do, but it's what I have to do. <laughs> but, uh, you know, un, unfortunately, but I don't feel the need to do what everybody else does. But we see also back to Second Peter chapter 2, uh, it talks about, you know, through covetousness. So they use covetousness and it says, with feigned words shall they make merchandise of you. Okay, and that, that word feigned, it means, you know, invented, devised, imagined, or assumed. And so feigned words, you know, they use fictitious things. They'll make stuff up. Okay, how many of you, especially when you were a kid, you watched the commercials for that toy that just made it look like the greatest thing in the world? And you got that toy, and it was one of the biggest letdowns of your life. Okay, that's happened to me multiple times in my life where I saw those commercials over and over again. I had to have that thing, and it just wasn't like on the commercial. It didn't do like on the commercial. But our imaginations, they're often used against us what was it that satan did when he tempted eve in the garden you know the serpent said unto the woman ye shall not surely die for god doth know that in the day ye eat thereof then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil now y'all realize that it wasn't completely a lie what he was saying right there because he just said you'll be as gods knowing good and evil that was true wasn't it they now knew good and evil but did it do what they thought it was going to do? No, it didn't. It was not what they expected. She got, you know, he used, you know, the lust of the eyes, uh, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life, used all those things on her and it worked and it was not what she expected. And we have all had that happen to us before where we have been sold by a commercial, something we saw on TV and we did it, we got it, we paid the money and it was not what we expected. And it was a huge letdown. You know, and how, how, how often are products everything you thought they would be? You know, when was the last time you got a sandwich at McDonald's and it actually looked like the picture? You know, when was the last time you went to Burger King or whatever and you took a bite of that sandwich and you had the same look on your face that they did on the commercial? You know, it, it looks so much more fun on the commercial when they're eating it. I mean, I enjoy a hamburger as much as anybody, but not as much as the people in those commercials. They make it look like the greatest thing. They use... You know, your imagination, they know how to do it, and it does. It works. It is very effective. You know, how many times have we had that real disappointment and we suffered the buyer's remorse? But it was too late. We couldn't get, you know, we couldn't get out of it. How many of us in this next month are going to make the same mistake again? We, you know, we got to be, you see, ah, it's no big deal. Listen, financial problems are a big deal. Financial problems are are one of the biggest causes of divorce, I mean, of just fights in marriage. It causes people to, you know, they, they can't give like they're supposed to give. They can't do, uh, a lot of times, even provide things they should be providing for because they got in trouble with the credit card company because they fell for some commercial. They fell for some advertising. They did something they wouldn't have normally wanted to do. And we just need to learn to just trust God and understand that He knows what's best. We've got to learn how to get victory over this flesh. Because that's what you're doing. When you buy these things, you're just appealing to the lust of the flesh. I think that's one of the best reasons in the world for fasting on a regular basis. Just learn how to have control of your flesh. You will not even come close to starving to death if you go one day without eating. You won't even come close to starving to death. But how often can we actually make that happen? Not very often. You know why? Because our flesh is what's running the show. And that's all there is to it. And maybe if we could learn to say no to that hamburger or say no to that can of soda, maybe we would learn to say no to the car dealer. You know, we would say, you know, to the big things that really get us in trouble. 
And listen, guys, we all like to get on the women for this stuff, but understand the things that get women all the time are things that cost, you know, 10, 20, 50, maybe a hundred bucks. What is it that gets the guys in trouble? It's the cars and stuff, you know, they can cost thousands of dollars. So, you know, we, we got to, we're prone to this stuff too. And you got to watch out for it. You got to get victory over this flesh. Don't let the ima your imagination run wild. You need to learn to think right. Don't let them use those feigned words and make merchandise of you. And listen, some of these salesmen, oh, they wouldn't rip me off. They seem like such nice people. Yes, that's why they're good salesmen. They're not going to act like an idiot. Otherwise, nobody's going to buy from them. They are going to seem like nice people. That Well, oh no, I, I'm telling you, I'm getting a great deal. Yes, a good salesman makes you think you got a great deal. That, that, that's, that just means they're good at their job. We can't fall for that stuff. But unfortunately, Christians many times, we're, no more, so we're less disciplined sometimes than lost people. It's amazing how many lost people have more control over their flesh than a lot of Christian people. It's sad that that's the case. They don't have the Holy Spirit helping them, yet they've learned to get control of their flesh. They've learned to get control of their finances. You know, They can control their spending. They can control their eating. They control all those things of the flesh. And Christian people have the Holy Spirit of God. We can't do it. And we're losing all the time. That's a problem. And we need, we need to learn to get over these things. And so then finally we see in 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 8, and this is, this is one of the biggest things, especially this time of year, we touch on a little bit, but it's talking about Lot. And it says in verse 8, For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Okay, the thing that got Lot in trouble, Lot was a righteous man. Lot wasn't doing the things that these people were doing. But understand, his righteous soul got vexed from just the seeing and hearing of the things they were doing all the time. While he might not have actually done those things, it did. Their wickedness affected him spiritually. It act, it did hurt him. He might not have ever committed any homosexual sins, but yet seeing it, hearing it, hearing about it all the time, those things they affected him. They vexed him. It hurt him. And you understand, while you and I, we might maybe you do have control. Okay. You've decided you determine, you know, I'm not going to get in credit card debt this Christmas. I'm going to control myself. You know, I'm, I'm going to do the right thing, but do you understand a lot of people who maybe they're controlling themselves physically when it comes to these things, emotionally, they're still being affected negatively and they're feeling sorry for themselves. Cause I'm not doing these things. I can't afford to buy my kids you know, the Nintendo switch and, you know, or the, you know, the PS 16 or the, you know, whatever, you know, that whatever they they're coming out with next, I can't afford to do all these things. Well, who told you you had to do those things to be a good parent advertising companies. I was talking with Abby. I, I made a, a commercial a long time ago. I used to make DVDs for the basketball and volleyball games at lighthouse. And I remember I made a Christmas commercial for one, trying to get people to buy the DVDs <laughs> And, you know, and it, I was using, using obvious manipulative tactics on there. And one of the lines I said in there is good, but good parents buy their kids, you know, lighthouse lightning DVDs for Christmas and, you know, just being, you know, being stupid on there. But you know what? While people don't come out and say those things in those words, they know how to make you feel like that. If, you know, parents, if you don't buy your kids, you know, all those things and whatever the latest toy is that everybody's fighting over some of you, even if you control yourself and you don't do it, you're going to feel like a crummy parent. And some of your kids, if you're not careful, are going to feel like you are a crummy parent if you don't buy them all those things this year. You know why? Because they're seeing and hearing what the world's doing all the time. You're, don't Listen, if you have, if you've convinced your kids, hey, we don't need to buy all these toys and spend thousands of dollars on Christmas, great. But I'm going to tell you, if you're not going to do all those things that we're supposed to be doing, I wouldn't let them watch all the TV commercials. I wouldn't let them all over the internet. Because they will make your kids feel like scum if they're not getting all those things. And they're, they're good at it and they know how to do it. And that was one of the things, even though Lot never did the things that the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were doing, it was hurting him. It was vexing him in seeing it and hearing it. And we got to be careful what we're watching. 
because you say, well, I wouldn't do those things, but you're, you'll let it, it'll affect, it'll still affect you spiritually if you're not careful. And eventually it could cause you to, you know what? I deserve this. That's a line they like to use in commercials. You deserve this. You know, they'll use those things and you'll end up finally being made merchandise of. And you know, while none of the traditions of Christmas are commanded in the Bible, who do we feel like if we're not doing them? Scrooge. You know, I remember when we lived in Cherry, all, and I'm not against Christmas lights. I just don't like hanging up Christmas lights because you have to do it in the cold. And then you have to take them down in the cold. And I remember we didn't put any Christmas lights up the one year. And I remember we looked, we were driving home at night and looking down our street. And our street's like all lit up with Christmas lights. And then there was this one blackout area. And it was our house. <laughs> so guess what I did? I went and bought some Christmas lights and put them up because I didn't want to look like a Scrooge. Okay, now where in the Bible are we commanded to put up Christmas lights anywhere? Okay, where in the Bible does it call us a Scrooge if we don't? Well, but Scrooge, I mean, that's the Christmas Carol, right? We all know about that. We've all seen that movie a million times. And so if we're not doing all the Christmas things, we're a Scrooge. Well, we can't be a Scrooge. Well, why not? You know, why, 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 can't we, why can't we be those things? I keep telling my family, why can't we take all the money that we would have spent on Christmas... And go take a trip somewhere. Oh, you're, you're supposed to, you know, do Christmas trees and open presents, and you know, we get the kids junk every year, and if they forget about it, you know, before the next year, you know, we remember the trips, we remember the experiences. Let's do something like that. Forget all that other stuff. That, that, that's my that's my philosophy. But you know, but what are they going to open on Christmas? They can open the door. And go outside in a warm climate somewhere. You know, that's, that's, that's what I would rather open up on Christmas. But, uh, you know, I don't know. A lot of people, you know, well, what about family and all that? If we don't go visit all the family on Christmas, let's go visit them after Christmas. Why do we, why do we have to be around family on Christmas Day? Oh, I mean, you are such a Scrooge. Why, you see, that's what you think because you're falling for this stuff. Some of y'all think, man, that's a jerk doing something like that. You know, taking your family away from all the other family and, you know, not opening presents on Christmas. Why? Where in the Bible are we commanded to do those things? Amen. But I'll tell you right now, we're commanded by the commercials to do those things. Every Christmas movie in the world, we're commanded to do those things. I mean, people, people are so programmed by these things. Some people feel like I got to travel north in, you know, for Christmas because, you know, you're a victim if you don't have snow. On Christmas, because how many Christmas movies have you seen where there was no snow before Christmas? Oh man, we gotta have snow, and then all of a sudden, there it is. Christmas is snow. Everybody's sitting around hugging each other. Listen, we live in Illinois. We never do that when it snows. We're oh, I gotta go shovel the. I gotta go shovel the driveway. You know, we hate that stuff. But people will travel to the north on Christmas so they can see snow and have a satisfying Christmas. We all know that that's not satisfying at all. But the people from down south think that because they watch all the same movies. And every, every Christmas movie is in the north because there's snow in every Christmas movie. And it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. And so we, th we do, we think, we think we're not affected by this stuff. But you know all this stuff's true, I'm telling you. You know it's all true. You know, are we giving these gifts out of love like God gave his son to the world because he so loved the world? Or are we giving it out of obligation? You know, I, I love all my family. I love all my nieces and nephews, but I can't afford to buy them all gifts. And you know what? I don't feel the need to pretend I can't afford it. So I would just rather me not buy them anything and them not buy me anything. Who are we trying to impress? All right. They, they know I'm not rich. They know, I, but some, oh, you know, we got to buy all these things. Who made up that rule? Walmart made up that rule. You know, Sears made up that rule. And so, you know, don't fall. It's not enough to just understand human behavior too, and say no to everything. And this is and this is the key here. You've got to have something better and some, something greater to live for. And a person in a family they who have no real purpose and you know who aren't even accomplishing anything in their lives, you know, those are going to be the ones that feel like I got to do all these other things. But people who are accomplishing something, people who do have meaning, you know. I don't need, I don't have time to compete with the Smiths and the Joneses. I don't need to compete with the Smiths and the Joneses during the holidays. I don't need to do that. The, you know, people that, you know, 
who have purpose and meaning all year round. They're not going to get messed up this time of year. And that's the key. We've got to actually have purpose in our lives. We've got to actually be accomplishing something, doing something for the cause of Christ, doing something that has eternal value. And when you're doing something that has eternal value, the rat race of the holidays, you're going to see it as a waste of time. And it's not, it's not going to bother you. You're not going to feel bad when you're not doing all those things. But if you don't have any purpose, if you're not doing anything for God, you will fill the need to fill that emptiness with frivolous stuff that's really expensive. The things of God aren't expensive. A lot of the things, you know, soul winning is free. Getting people saved is free. But when was the last time you saw a commercial showing you how fulfilling it is to win a soul to Christ? You didn't. You saw a commercial about how fulfilling it is for your kids to get the new Nintendo Switch. And so now you're working overtime on Saturday so you could buy your kid that video game. It's just going to make them dumber. Why? You know, get some real eternal value in your life, some real eternal purpose, and you won't fall for those things. And you can actually not just enjoy the holidays, you can enjoy the entire year. And that's what we, we ought to be able to do that as Christians. We shouldn't be in the same boat as the rest of this world. And so with that, let's all stand together.